All right. Cool. So we are live, and uh, if you're joining us on the recording, thank you for joining us. Cass, how do you pronounce your last name just so I don't butcher it? It's Sapir. Sapir. All right, cool. We go are going to be speaking in a moment with Cass Sapir from Hapyak. Is that the full name, or is it Hapyak Interactive? It's Hapyak. That's right. I like that name. That's cool. <laughs> Sometimes I wonder, where, you know, where do we come up with these interesting names? Is there a story behind Hapyak? Or? Yeah, there sure is. It's uh, the initial version of the product allowed people simply to comment on YouTube videos. Oh. from happy yakking or happy yeah. talking about uh -huh. video. Um, uh -huh. And the name just stuck with people usually laugh when they hear it. So we yes. like it. Awesome. All right, so what we're going to do is uh, give a couple minutes for people to pop in. And uh, we will, let me just send out a notice here in the last tweet. And at the right at the top of the hour, we'll be live. You'll see people kind of come into the room. And... Uh, We'll take it from there. Oops, I forgot to put the link in here. Let me just add the link. I'm just tweeting this out at the last minute here just to give people an opportunity to join us. There we go. All right. So if you are watching the recording, you're seeing a little bit of uh, the behind the scenes here as we get this all set up and ready to go. we got another minute or so before we go live, and then I'll uh, do your intro, tell folks what it's all about, and we'll dive right in. Let's see. So just, I still have you on your end? Yes. Perfect. Okay, awesome. All right. Um, I got your slides. There's a backup in case we need them. And... Google Hangouts is working. I love when that happens. It's amazing. I mean, I really hasn't, I haven't had many problems, knock on wood, uh, with Google Hangouts as a delivery platform for doing webinars and live broadcasts. It's just been really uh, a boon to be able to just fire this up anytime and speak to folks on the web. Yeah, that's amazing. Uh, okay, I'm going to send out one other tweet here just to let people know where we're at. And then we will get going. Uh, uh, do, 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 do. Okay. Got that, got that. I feel like I'm at NASA here. I've got too many computer screens going <laughs> at the same time. All right, so I think we can kind of uh, get rolling here as people are showing up. Um, like I say, right at the top of the hour, we'll start to see some attendees pop in. And uh, I'll give you a little introduction, and then we'll take it from there. But if you are here early or listening to the recording, you're in for a treat because uh, I discovered... Hi, April. I discovered uh, Hapyak not that long ago, and I was like, oh my gosh, this is like the holy grail. If you can make your videos interactive and engaging and actually get people to do something with them, then you're really on to something. All right, awesome. So folks uh, have shown up. I can see them in the chat room. So without further ado, I'm going to uh, pop right in here and do a quick little introduction and then hand it over to Cass Sapir. Because what we're talking about today is interactive video and creating a compelling customer journey. I talk about this all the time because it really isn't enough to just throw a video up. You've got to make it, uh, you've got to have good content and you've got to make that content engaging and interactive. So uh, we're going to be talking with Cass Sapir who is the Customer Success Director for Hapyak and we're going to learn how to use interactive video to create a human connection with prospects, which is something I talk about all the time. So we're going to talk about the challenges to create an engaging video experience. And Cass, I love to use that word, video experience. Understanding the journey of a video viewer. It's not just watching a video. It's, it's engaging and interacting with it. We're also going to talk about how to use interactivity to guide viewers along their personal path. Uh, Cass will talk about why that's important, how to leverage interactivity for reporting, 
how to divine insights from viewer interactions so you can make better videos in the future. And interactive video really is the new medium for marketing, consulting, and coaching. So whether you're an entrepreneur, a small business, or a go-getter in a large corporation, you can use interactive video to promote products and services, to teach and educate the customer, and to discover their needs and preferences. And as I mentioned, Cass Sapir is Customer Success Director for Hap Yak, which is an interactive video company. And Cass spends most of his time advising people on how to create better interactive video, how to produce video with interactivity in mind, and researching and distributing best practices for interactivity for the video community. So in this webinar, Cass will share examples of interactive video that just work, so we'll get to see some cool examples. Uh, you'll see why view time and engagement, as they are traditionally defined, are ineffective metrics in measuring the success of your video strategy and learn which metrics to replace them with. Because you want people to watch your video, and more importantly, you want them to take action and do what you want them to do at the end of the video. Uh, you're also going to learn benchmark click-through and interaction rates for interactive videos, so you'll be able to measure the effectiveness of your campaigns as you get started in this exciting new medium. Uh, I'm going to hand it over to Cass here. Uh, thank you again for being here. This is good stuff. This is cutting-edge stuff. And you're on screen. You have the calm, as they would say in Star Trek. So I'm going to let you... Uh, fly away with it, and if there are questions, people can put them into the chat box. Uh, we'll answer them as we go. And Cass, anything you want to add before you get started? No, that sounds great. Awesome. Well, thanks again for doing this. This is exciting. I've been using Yak. As I say, I, I feel like the interactive part of video is the holy grail because now it's two-way communication instead of one-way communication. It's where things are going. And thank you for the people for being on this webinar because you guys are the smart cookies who are going to be ahead of the curve. So, Cass, it's all yours. Great. Thanks, Lou. And hello, everyone. I'm really excited for this webinar. It looks like there's a great um, set of attendees. It's going to be interactive. We're going to see examples of interactive video that we're going to watch together. Um, we'll have polls that will pop up so we can see really how other people are using interactive video and video in general. And um, also, please feel free to ask questions as we go along. Type them in the chat box, and every few minutes or so, I'll stop to read um, the questions and see if we can answer some. We'll also have a good about 10 or 15 minute section at the end of the webinar for Q&A as well, if you'd like to save your questions until then. Um, so what I'm going to do is switch from the camera over to the screen share. While I do that, I'd love for you guys to take a look at the first poll that we've put up. And it's around, have you ever created an interactive video before? Helps me kind of gauge what the audience um, level of experience is. So I'll make that live. And if you have a chance, please do vote when you have a chance. Yeah, you should see that poll on the right-hand side of your screen. And you may have to hit the poll uh, menu bar. But you should see a poll, and we'll be able to uh, vote on the fly and see the results. So Very let cool. us know. Yeah, I'll leave that up for about 60 seconds or so, and then we can all see the results. But just to get started, um, let me introduce myself and, and what we're going to cover here on the webinar. Uh, like Lou was saying, interactive video is really the new medium for marketing and sales. So a lot of you folks might be entrepreneurs, small businesses, or just a go-getter at a large organization who wants to do something new. And you probably have heard of interactive video. Um, the term is kind of in the air, but today we're going to really get down to the nitty gritty and see what it's all about. The, it's important to note that the principles we're going to talk today are independent of any interactive video platform. So I do work for Hapyak, um, which is one of the platforms out there. But whether you're using YouTube annotations or some of the other folks, um, these principles can be applied no matter what technology you're using. Um, we're really going to focus on using interactive video today for marketing and sales. There are some great use cases around teaching and e-learning and corporate training, but we're really going to focus the discussion today on marketing and sales. I'm going to close the poll so we can all see uh, what the uh, result. Oh, wow. 
A hundred percent. Yes. <laughs> we have a very experienced group today. That's wonderful. Um, go back to the presentation here. So to start off, my name is Cass Sapir. I'm the Customer Success Director here at Happyak. Um, please feel free to contact me afterwards via LinkedIn, Twitter, or via email. Um, my job, my background is actually as a filmmaker and TV person. And I joined Happy Echo about a year ago because I was interested in interactive video. And I've spent most of my time advising companies and people at companies on how to create interactive video. So I've seen a lot of great examples and I've seen a lot of bad ones. Um, and I've been able to pull out examples that really work, um, that are easy to understand. As you'll see, it'll be easy to replicate um, for your own job or your own business. And they're tremendously, tremendously effective. And once you start, I promise you won't see video the same way again. Um, what I want to do is start out with a general question um, for folks there uh, so you can think about what we'll learn today. Um, why would you want to use interactive video for sales? Um, we're going to talk about that. We're going to see examples of interactive videos that just work. We're going to learn about metrics, um, why view time and engagement as they're traditionally defined are ineffective metrics, um, and which metrics really you should be looking at, what you can replace them with in your day-to-day -day activity. And finally, and this is really exciting, we're releasing for the first time benchmark click-through and interaction rates for interactive videos. Um, Happy Act is actually a platform. We power annotations and interactive video for a lot of um, other video hosts and video companies out there. So we have the benefit of having the most interactive video data besides YouTube. Um, and what we've been doing over the last month and a half is really taking a hard look at that so we can gain some insights and share it with the community. What really are the benchmark click-through and interaction rates? So let's get to that question. And please feel free to type in the chat if you have an answer for this question. What is the great fear for those creating web video? What is your great fear today for creating web video? Feel free to type in the chat. One word, two words, however, however many you like. This is not a poll, so just type in the chat box. Yeah, whatever you, whatever you honestly feel. While those are coming in, um, what I can say I hear from people a lot is, is this effective? Is the work that I'm doing to create these videos actually producing a measurable business outcome for the company? And if you want to get a little more specific about it, they're worried about people clicking play and walking away. Yep, that's what Cindy says. She's afraid no one will watch it. Right. Uh, Philip says, a lot of time with little response, so exactly what you're saying. Uh, right. Looking good, no one will watch it. Technical glitches, that it won't be engaging. Hair and makeup, which I know is a big concern for a lot of the <laughs> women out there. Uh, yep. How are we looking sound, creating something effective. So, yeah, exactly what you're saying. Yep, it's a big, wonderful. Big, Wonderful. And, you know, it sounds funny to say click play and walk away. And sure, people might click to another page or just stop watching the video. But I hear again and again people are worried about people actually clicking play. And then the video is playing in the background, but the person presumably watching it is doing something else. They're checking Facebook. They're checking their phone. Maybe they're talking with a colleague next door. So when you look at the view time metrics, the video might have actually played through, but nobody was home. There were no eyeballs actually watching that video. Um, it's a fundamental problem with video. And why is that? You know, why is it that uh, a lot of viewers will do that? Well, the simple version is that they've been burned by long video before, and they're intimidated by that duration that they see at the bottom of it. What do you do when you see a video? You might see 29 minutes and 59 seconds. Oh, geez, there goes the next 30 minutes of my day, <laughs> right? What am I going to get out of this as a viewer? I don't know. 
Um, maybe I'll click around in the timeline and try to figure out as best I can what's involved in this video, what it's all about. But again and again and again, hundreds of times a year, every viewer is burned by a long video. So you really can't blame them for clicking away because they've been treated poorly before. And forget 30 minutes, even a three minute long video seems like et an eternity on the web today. The reason is that every viewer, every person comes to your video with a unique set of preconditions. Prior knowledge, prior experience, goals, specific questions to be answered. It's not rocket science, it's kind of common sense when you think about it because we're all unique, we all have unique experiences, but yet video is a single asset that's supposed to fit the needs of many, but that's simply not the case. So our advice is to think of video differently. We recommend making your video work like the rest of the web. Think about that for a moment. What does that mean? Make your video work like the rest of the web. Well, you're giving people choice and control in what they're watching. On the web, people have choice and control every day, all the time. On websites, they can follow their interests. They can click through to whatever path they deem is most appropriate for themselves. And if you think about doing video like that, it's going to start behaving like the rest of the web. The other thing, and Lou, you kind of alluded to this at the beginning, when you're doing that, you're having a conversation with the viewer rather than lecturing at them. This is just like you'd do if you were in person in the same room with that viewer. Um, but now you can take that experience and bring it onto a video, bring it into an online video viewing experience. Well, how do you do that? The answer is pretty simple. You make video interactive and you add interactions clickable hotspots, clickable links, clickable overlays, questions, chapters, polls, things like we're doing today during the webinar, you add those to your on-demand video so you check in with the viewer and you make sure they're able to personally guide themselves through that experience. Let's see a little bit more about what that means. I've pulled out three specific examples that I think are, again, really simple. These take maybe 15 minutes to create. You can have existing videos. You don't have to shoot a new video to do this. Um, and you can instantly make it interactive and effective. This first one was done by LJG, which is an agency out in California, for a company called Party Homes. They're a home builder. You see large tracts of homes in many parts of the country. This is one of those companies that builds those tracts of homes. And one of the homes is called a Gen Smart, and the room inside it is called a Gen Smart Suite. So it's not a room that, uh, it's not a bedroom, it's not a living room. It's that extra room that you do something with in your house. And we all do different things with that extra room in the house. I'm going to click on the link here, and I really do encourage you um, to check these out after the webinar and go through it yourself. But you should be able to see me interacting with this video as any normal viewer would. So I'm on the Party Homes page. I have some interest in Gen Smart Suite, and I click play on the video. It tells me it asks me which GenSmart suite is right for me. And I'm going to explore this live. The first question it says is, what is my living situation? Well, in my case, it's myself, my wife, and we have a six-month-old at home, so it's me and my family. Now look at this. It's skipped ahead in time. It says, what would you use the extra space for? Um, probably <laughs> for a nanny or caregiver, now that I think about it. View our locations. Well, let's see. I live near Inland Empire, California. And, oh, I've heard of Meadow Ridge before. I've driven by and seen the signs for it. I'll click here. And notice the very end, it actually opens up the web page for Meadow Ridge. There's a form here that you can fill out um, as a viewer. Now, let's go back to this video 
and think about what just happened. This was a one minute and 39 second long video, but I as a viewer completed my journey in 15 seconds. I knew that it's me and my family. I knew that I was interested to um, have all the toys and cribs and everything we have up there for Milo, for my son. Um, that's what I want to use the extra uh, room for. I knew I indicated where I lived and I actually got to look at a home that I might be interested in purchasing in the future. On the flip side of that, Party Homes also gets all this incredibly valuable lead intelligence, right? When I fill out this form, I'm also going to have all that great information about what I was interested in. And you know what? I didn't do it in a kind of sterile form on the internet. I did it as if I was being talked to by a sales rep from Party Homes. Um, it's a really powerful concept when you think about it. Reducing the time spent from a minute 40 down to 15 seconds, I have a perfectly personalized experience and path on the video and the company gets all that great lead intelligence. So we're not hearing the audio obviously, but in this video would there be audio that also helps guide them through that, those choices? Yeah. Great question, Lou. So in this particular video there is actually no audio track when mm -hmm. you watch it. Um, the, uh, what I would recommend uh, for something like this is having an ambient audio track. So whether it's a cyclical loop of audio of music that repeats over and over again, um, that really works well because it, it blends these choice points you know, into the experience. You don't kind of pause the video. Um, I'll actually get to that in the next example to see how to make this kind of seamless. Um, the other uh, option, of course, is to have someone a really simple present it, presentation to camera um, by a human being. So it would look like you look now on the webinar um, or really any presentation to camera. You've seen nothing fancy. It can be pretty basic. But then you actually have a human being talking to the viewer and saying, hey, are you interested in Durango Ranch? El Dorado Heights Horizon Terrace, click to my left or to my right and we'll bring you to that. Um, so these are kind of basic filmmaking techniques and you can really reduce the amount of post-production that you need to do um, in terms of audio. So that's a great question. So the um, viewer is now, all of a sudden the viewer is in control and it's really more of a lean forward kind of interaction than a just sit back and watch. You got it. That's spot on. You got it. Um, and uh, again, I really encourage you to take a look at this at the conclusion of the webinar. Um, <clears throat> I'll pause just for a moment, remind folks, if you do have any questions, please feel free to type them in the chat box um, and we'll answer them as we go. But let's move on to this second example here. Um, this is Excelsior College, uh, which is uh, an online you know, learning institution that's growing very rapidly. Um, and they found that the people coming in the door who are interested in their programs have a lot of very basic questions, um, kind of nuts and bolts questions around their programs that they offer online. So let me show you how they dealt with those. So we'll load this example live. Um, <clears throat> there we are. Uh, they have a web page that might look like any other content marketing web page that you've seen with a video and a playlist here on the right side. But for specific videos, they have the title and then they have a chapter menu on the top left. And if you see very closely, what they've done is outlined all the questions that are covered in this video. If I click on one, it skips me. This is a no-brainer, but it skips me ahead to that point in the video. Um, and I can listen to the explanation directly from, in this case, the senior academic advisor for this particular program. If I want to click to another question, I'll do so. And then it's going to cover that question live. So again, I've covered in about 40 seconds the two questions that I'm interested in. And I didn't have to do that thing that we've all done on web videos and skipped around and tried to guess based on where I landed by happenstance, what's involved, what's the material in that video. Um, as you'll see, 
adding chapters to existing videos is, I think, the best bang for the buck. It takes maybe, I don't know, four or five minutes to do so, but it's the easiest way to get started with interactive video um, and to really personalize your existing assets. And even if you have hundreds of assets, you can assign someone on your team and they can get it done in a day and a half. Um, so to wrap this example up, um, it's all about giving the viewer access to information that they care about most um, at that point in the video, just like any web page would. But now when you click on it and you go to that section of the video, there's an actual human being explaining it to you. It really personalizes the experience. Um, again, please do take a look at this and the other examples that Excelsior has, because I think they've really kind of led the way um, in terms of lead generation in the online um, education space um, and marketing with video in the online education space. Uh, so it's a great kind of uh, use of time to uh, uh, check those examples out. Yeah, I love that one. I did, I did a 20 minute video recently and put chapter markers in it because I figured like, okay, well, people may not want to watch the whole 20 minute video, but they can scroll down to the section that they want and just jump right to that. Yeah, spot on. And you know, a great example are webinars. It's a thing we're doing right now. Webinars are great when you watch them live, but sometimes you have a meeting then, uh, you need to, uh, you're out of that time zone, you have something else, but you want to watch that webinar on demand. <laughs> We've all seen, been faced with a 60 minute webinar, and we want to know, is it going to be worth our time to spend 60 minutes watching it? Well, when you add chapters to a webinar, it brings, it breathes life into that on-demand asset. Um, and actually, I didn't even think about this. Why don't, at the end of this uh, webinar, why don't we make it interactive and we'll share it with folks and they can see that, you yeah. know, a real live example. Um, so here is uh, the third example. And again, this is pretty right down the plate. It's really easy to do, but it's tremendously effective. Um, this example was created by Bill Goldsmith Productions. Uh, he's a um, producer, uh, a web video producer down in the, I think the Philly or southern New Jersey area. Um, and his client in this case was Joe Ferry, who's a lawyer who specializes and has for a long time in helping home inspectors, the folks who come into uh, your home when you're thinking about buying it and tell you, hey, you know, there's a problem here, there's a problem there and give you an inspection report. These home inspectors are often sued um, in a, a non-meritorious way. Um, they have to deal with frivolous claims and Joe, this lawyer, Joe Ferry, has made a really um, good sort of niche for himself in defending these home inspectors against meritorious claims. Well, he's been doing it for years in in-person sessions, uh, conferences, that sort of thing, and he wanted to take this advice and put it online. So what Bill Goldsmith did is he said, hey, let's take that standard advice that you give the people and chop it up into 40 video tips. And you can use these video tips as content marketing assets that a home inspector can watch, learn a little bit about it. They can become a more qualified lead while they watch it. And if interested, they can then sign up for your, in this case, claims intercept service is the service that the lawyer offers. Let's take a look at this example and see why it's important to use interactive video for all these home inspectors. So there's two groups of people. This is going to sound very familiar to most of you. There are people who are already a lead, they're in your database, they're in your pipeline, maybe they're a customer, and they're also brand new folks coming to your website for the first time. So they have found out a way to personalize that video for both of those groups, the new leads and the folks in the pipeline or existing customers. Let me show you what I'm talking about. I'll click play. Here's the intro, looks very familiar. Now, I'm a customer. I've seen this intro before. I don't want to have to see this guy for the 39th time. Welcome me, welcome me to the uh, series. So I simply click that button, and I click forward to 20 seconds to the meat of the video, as it were. Let me turn down the volume so I can focus. Um, I am now watching, you know, my 38th, 39th 
home inspector tip here. I'm getting my weekly email, I'm watching my tip, and I'm becoming an educated prospect. If I'm interested, you know, I'll click get full access or sign up for one of Joe Ferry's products. Um, if, however, I'm a new prospect, person here who's come to the website for the first time, I'm not going to skip the intro. I'm going to watch the entire tip, and towards the end, what Bill has done for Joe is put a very simple call to action. It says, click here to subscribe to the video training series. I'll do that, and as you can see, um, I'm in the, uh, uh, the place, you know, I've clicked the call to action, and now I'm going to submit my information and maybe sign up for Joe's service here, claim intercept, as I was referring to. So again, to recap, this is the most basic example I can think of, but it's a great way to personalize an existing asset, both for existing leads in the pipeline and new leads that have come um, in for the first time. That's the uh, third example. <clears throat> That's Why really don't we cool. pause here for a sec? Yeah, go ahead, Lou. I, I did get a question from Susan. She wants to know, like in the example where you have the chapter links, will the chapter links work with YouTube videos, or do you need to put them on a website with a special player? Sure. Great question. Um, so I'll give you the example from Hapyak's perspective, and then the general uh, kind of interactive video perspective. Hapyak happens to be a platform that works with all existing um, video players. So that means YouTube, Vimeo, Brightcove, Wistia, Kaltura, even open source players like JW Player, VideoJS. So in our case, your video lives where it does right now, and you bring those video URLs or embed codes into Hapyak, you add the chapters, and then typically you would embed um, that interactive version of the video onto your website or content management system, learning management system, that sort of thing. Um, with the player-specific options, like YouTube's annotation suite, the great part about that is any chapters or links or annotations that you add will actually live on the YouTube watch page, the actual YouTube video itself. Um, which is a huge advantage if you have a lot of traffic that's directly going to YouTube to find your content. So it really does matter um, where your audience is coming from, but there is an option for chapters and for really every other annotation type we've seen, both in a YouTube um, annotation source or a Hapyak or one of the other interactive video platforms out there. Um, I hope that answers your question. Yep. And then um, Peter wanted to know what software was being used to, to set up the questions um, when you had the uh, example with the questions, which I assume is, is Hapyak, which is what you're using. Yeah, it is. Um, in fact, I'd be happy to do a quick demo of the software um, later on during the Q&A session if folks are interested in that, and I can show you um, how to set up the questions. This is an example video that I'll show you on, um, but really, this is similar to, again, YouTube annotations or others in the sense that you bring in your video and then what you're doing is overlaying these annotations on top of it. In this case, a multiple choice question. Um, Happy Act has some really cool features around customizing the uh, what happens to the viewer if they pass or fail that quiz question. So for lead intelligence, you could say, are you a new prospect or an existing customer? and visualize different annotations based on it. Um, but most of the tools that you're going to use look like this, where there's a video behind it, and you use sort of a what you see is what you get interface to add um, interactions or annotations, as they're called, um, to videos. Does that help? Yep. So you pause the video and answer the quiz, or do you have to click on something to, to launch the quiz? Sure. Yeah, good question. So an example of... Um, you know, where there is quiz questions uh, on top of a video. This is more of a training example, um, mm -hmm. but what I see from most folks is the quiz annotation is the one where you typically do want to pause the video because mm -hmm. what you're doing is really kind of checking in with the viewer and making sure that they understand what you just watched or what you just was trying to teach them. It's the same way that you know a great teacher or a great professor of yours in college would really interact with the class rather than lecture at them. 
um, and they would check in with the class to make sure that they really understood what they're watching. Um, so in this case, you see the video has paused. Um, I can reflect on the last minute and a half or so um, and then answer the question and continue on my way. Um, I, why don't I show it live because this is a really cool kind of enhanced quiz example where I'm actually going to get the question wrong. Notice I'm at 1422. If I hit submit, in this case it says wrong, let's review. You click done and it snaps me back 21 seconds in time. So I can organically review the section um, live. But I, I think the point um, to get to your question is really important. For quiz questions, um, I would recommend trying them out by setting pause to yes um, on those annotations. And that way the viewer can really think about it, answer it, and be on their way. Um, the other recommendation I'd make um, based on seeing Real people do this um, as they get to know interactive video. This just this is what you'll do eventually, so you might as well start off doing it. Um, you notice I'm at 1422 in the video. I would recommend adding quiz questions, even for leads, right? Even if you're doing lead intelligence and sales and marketing with videos, add your polls or quiz questions every couple minutes or so. Mm -hmm. Why would you want to do that? Well. I think you know Wistia and some others have great stats around video engagement. Your viewers are guaranteed to drop off every couple of minutes. Um, they drop off, I think, by 50% every minute after two. Um, that's a well-worn statistic. That's why people always say make short videos, <laughs> make mm -hmm. snappy, you know, interesting videos. But what happens when you add quiz questions or polls for marketing every couple minutes is you're getting the viewer into a positive feedback loop where they watch a short section of the video and then they answer a very easy lightweight question mm -hmm. and then they continue on their way so they really kind of reset their attention um, so when you're using a tool when you're getting started with interactive video I really would recommend you know adding them every couple minutes or so it's a really great kind of first time tip for folks that's cool thank you cool my, my pleasure um, and keep the questions coming, guys. This is great um, to know what everyone's interested in. What I'm going to move on to next is the final portion of the uh, presentation before we get into Q&A and then more of a demo on the software if that would interest you guys. So sure. these are interactive video benchmarks that we have pulled out from our platform um, for the very first time. Um, what we did is take a look at all 13, or 13 million or so interactive video plays over the month of May. And we looked at it um, across all the people we're partnered with. So we're an actual annotations provider some, for some of the major video hosting companies that you guys may, might use. So it's really our direct customers and also the partners we work with. Um, and we took a look at each of the interaction or annotation types. The first one we did was chapters. So across all the videos, the interaction rate for chapters is about 13.5%. That means roughly 13.5% of the people who come to that video really interacted in a fundamental way and uh, sought more specific information from that video. These are the 130 out of 1,000, the 13 out of 100, of your leads that are probably the most valuable. Uh, so when you go into your reports or analytics section for your interactive video tool, you really want to pick out those viewers and understand what they interacted with, um, specifically which content they were interested in, and um, who they are versus the 87% who didn't. Let's take a look next at links. I think you guys are going to find this interesting. So these are specifically click-through rate. Um, these are links to um, these are links outside of the video. Okay, not clicks within the video where you're jumping ahead or back in time, but actually the click-through from the video to a web page, for example. Um, the click-through rate is 11.61. Okay, wow. 
11.61%. Let's put that in perspective for a moment. The YouTube click-through rate, it, the same thing for these links on YouTube videos using YouTube annotations is about 0.72%. This is data from Distilled, and again, I'd recommend you take a look at their data and the study they did um, for, for perspective here. But this is more than about a 15-fold increase um, in click-through rate based on interactive video that's not on YouTube but is rather on your website. Okay, That's the key here, is on YouTube, People are not looking to click through for services. They're not looking to get sold to. They're there to get entertained. That's what YouTube's all about. And really, when it comes down to it, sorry, when it comes down to it, YouTube annotations are all about <laughs> keeping people on YouTube, having mm -hmm. people subscribe to your channel, having people watch more of your videos or related videos after they're done watching your videos. Um, it's not about sending people to your website to make a sale or to make um, a lead or a prospect out of it. So. This is a really, maybe the most important take home from the webinar, I think, for marketing and sales, and something we were very surprised by. Um, and again, if you really go down the food chain here for advertisement units, the average click through rate for Google Display Ads is about 0.2%, and the average click through rate for all banner ads, this is from Seismic, and they have a great data set here, and they really benchmark this every year, is about 0.1%. So, what is that? This is a, a more than a hundredfold wow. increase on click-through rate. So it really shows you, hey, spend five minutes making your interactive video um, clickable and look at the benefit you're going to get compared to any spend you could have on banner ads. Um, really important data here. Uh, we'll share the link for this presentation so you can take a look at these, and I really do encourage you take, to take a look at these other statistics. Um, the final group of data here is around quizzes. Um, this, as you can see, surprised us as well. 65% of viewers across 13 million interactive video views interacted with this quiz. If this is for training or e-learning, you you'd be hard-pressed to ever find a better medium for doing so. Um, for finding that kind of interaction rate and engagement rate from your, your viewers. If you're trying to get lead intelligence, um, either through a poll or through kind of a, a training um, video that's used as marketing, and, it, and again, I think, Lou, Lou, you talk about this, the lines between training and marketing are getting really blurry. Um, so adding quiz questions as a marketing tool you know, interactive videos as a marketing tool is incredibly effective. And look, people are going to interact. They're going to love it, um, as you can see, 65%. Um, so across all of these annotations, if you blend them all together, the interaction rate is about 35%. Um, and at Hapyak, we've come up with the term for these viewers. We call them activated viewers. These are your most valuable leads. These are your most valuable prospects. These are your activated leads. Mm. Um, and for the first time through the medium of video, you can pull those people out from the rest of the audience and focus your efforts on them. And guess what? You have all that great intelligence. What they were interested in, what content they were interested in, how they understood your product, what specific product they clicked through to. Um, it's really a win-win-win for the viewer, for you. Um, there's no downside to it. So That's really cool. Let's um, kind of round out the discussion here, what this means. Because um, I promised you at the outset, you're going to hopefully think about video a little bit differently. And the conclusion we've drawn after talking with hundreds and thousands of interactive video viewers and watching the content that they produce is, did they watch the entire video is not as important as, did they complete their journey? Every viewer came to your video with a unique set of needs, goals, requirements, experience, questions that they wanted answered. They're all going to take a different journey through that video. And as you just saw, 
allowing them to do so does not take a lot of effort um, and is incredibly valuable. So I would start to think about throwing away completion rate, throwing away overall view time, throwing away overall view numbers, and thinking about engagement, interaction, and um, conversion rates for your videos. Um, it's a fundamentally different way of thinking about it, and it might kind of hurt your brain a little bit, but I promise you once you cross over to the other side, um, you'll never think of video in the same way. So I'm going to wrap it up there. Uh, I really hope this was valuable. I'd love mm. to dive into some Q&A. Either, Lou, you might have some thoughts um, that we can get into. Yeah. And if you guys are interested in, I'd be happy to share how to create your first interactive video with a tool like Happyak um, over these final 15 minutes. Yeah, that would be awesome. We do have some questions, but I just want to kind of, um, you know, echo what you're saying. And I think the fundamental difference here, because, you know, you and I come from TV, television and viewing in general for the last, you know, 50 years has been a, a passive, lean-back experience. And we're trained to watch the entire show because the resolution is at the end of the show. But with this online video and with interactivity, it's really more important to have your viewers kind of lean in and get what they need regardless of the fact whether they watch the whole video. It's like, look, you've solved my problem at, at, at 38 seconds because I got that question or that link, so I'm done. I'm good. You're spot on. And it's, it's hard to get out of that mindset because we're mm -hmm. all <laughs> used to watching television. The average American watches five hours of television per day. Mm -hmm. um, and when we do that, we want to lean back. We want to be entertained. We want to turn off our brain. But web video is different. Yeah. People are leaning forward. They have goals in mind, and you want to give them the ability to um, realize those goals at the very moment that they want to. Yeah, and I think we'd love to see a demo. But let me just uh, throw a, quick, a couple of quick questions from you uh, from the viewers here. And um, Jackie's asking, does Hapyak capture the email of the person interacting when they answer the questions? Uh, yeah, that's a great, great question. So um, our platform, Hapyak, the other half of it besides this tool is the analytics and reports side. Mm -hmm. um, and we track actually down to every single click what every single viewer is doing and every email you know that's submitted is actually tracked within our analytics um, in our particular case we're actually take kind of an, an agnostic view about where you want that data to go so mm -hmm. some folks actually look at their reports directly within Hapyak but most of the people um, I talk to have an external system like HubSpot like Marketo like Salesforce mm -hmm. where they want to store this information um, We've built some integrations to those tools, but they actually um, will use our APIs, mm -hmm. um, which if you have developer resources, they typically will use this thing right here, um, mm -hmm. the reporting API, to send that data, um, the email address data, and more importantly, all that great lead intelligence that comes with that lead intelligence data that um, is. through that external system. It, it goes way beyond the email because if I do a quiz in my video uh, that says, would you like this product or that product or that product, I can actually see who wants what kind of product and what the response is rather than if I do it on SurveyMonkey, it's kind of like flying blind because I get the response, but I don't know what to do with the information. Yep, that's right. Uh, cool. So let me see another question here. Um, and this, I guess, we'll probably just go back to the demo because Patty wants to know, what are the steps? Shoot and edit video, upload to Hapyak, and then save and upload to YouTube? Or where do sure. the interactions come in? I think if you do a quick demo, that's going to answer that question for you. I'd be happy to do it. Um, I, I'm going to assume for right now most people have at least one video on YouTube because I think almost every human on the planet has one on YouTube. So let's try that first. Um, the steps are really simple. Uh, what you do is you create a new project in Hapyak. In this case, the video source for that prod, prod project is coming from YouTube. Um, mm -hmm. I'm going to copy the URL 
for that video source. I'm going to paste it in here. It'll automatically recognize, in most cases, what the video source is, or you can select it from the drop-down here. And as I mentioned, we work with every major video player. And then you give it a title. What you're doing is creating what we call a project in Happy Act. And just like any web video, you would click Play. And when you reach a point in the uh, video, you would use this toolbar down at the bottom to add your annotations. So in this case, I'd add a text annotation. Maybe what I'd want to do is add a link to it. Um, there you go. Uh, and maybe you know I'd want to style it, mm. give it a certain color and opacity. I'll choose the ugliest shade of green just because that's <laughs> what my mouse landed on. Oh, um, and you know, like I said, it takes about a few minutes to create your first video. If I wanted to add some chapters to it, I'd click there add a chapter, maybe I'd add another chapter here. Um, oops, that was a text annotation. But you get the idea, I'll add another chapter here, and then add a chapter menu um, using this annotation. On Happy Act, you can name your chapters anything you want, um, or you can delete the uh, text entirely, and it's going to show you a chapter menu. Um, and then finally, maybe I'll add a test quiz question. some potential answers. And in this case, I'll just indicate one of those answers as correct by clicking on this radio button right here. Um, that's it. I've actually created my wow. first interactive video. If I wanted to test it, I click View Landing Page. Um, and I play it. And now I have chapters. Mm. I can skip around in the video. Um, I think at the beginning I added a link, if I'm not mistaken. There it was. Yeah. And I can click on the link, and it's going to open up um, you know, the external website. Uh, mm -hmm. So you add your annotations, and then the final step is you can either share this landing page. You'd actually literally copy and paste this and email it to a colleague or mm -hmm. a customer or a client. Or if you want to embed this interactive video somewhere, you copy the embed code. And this is what you'd paste into your content management system, learning mm -hmm. management system, website, that sort of thing. Um, the cool part about it is when you embed it on your website, let's say you wanted to go back and ed edit the video, you can do that live, add another annotation, and when this video is embedded, um, it's going to update that live. So you don't need to re-embed the video or anything like that. Um, so that's a very powerful uh, part of having kind of a web-based uh, interactive video platform like this. That's cool. So um, you can take a video from YouTube that's finished and upload it to YouTube and then add interactive elements and quizzes and links and then embed that back on your website so that it's sort of gone the next level beyond YouTube. Now it's completely interactive on your website. Yep, that's exactly right. And in fact, you remember the party homes example that we looked at? Um, where is it? Genmart Suite. Um, this is a YouTube video. It's actually uploaded to YouTube. Um, mm -hmm. And some people watch it on YouTube, but the vast majority of their viewers are directed through all their marketing channels to this web page, mm -hmm. at which point they interact with it. Um, and they uh, you know, sort of fill out their preferences. Actually, this is a great example of, of what you just talked about. The agency actually went back and changed the content here. They changed mm -hmm. the uses. And now they have new data around how these new um, sort of clients would be interested in using the space. So yeah, you can even update the video live on YouTube or update the annotations on Happy Hack, and it's going to be updated live on your website. Awesome. Um, Patty's asking, so you don't publish your video until you're done working in Happy Hack. Yep, you got yeah. it. Um, you, uh, the term, we don't use publish because, again, mm -hmm. it's, this is all web software, um, yeah. cloud-based web software, but you can embed your video after you're done in Hapyak. Um, but, uh, Patty, the key there is if you want to go and update that, remember that interactive video version, you can always um, add your annotations. This is the same way YouTube annotations work. So, again, mm -hmm. if you guys have a lot of traffic on... YouTube and you want to get started there with interactive video, I recommend doing that. 
because it's very flexible around updating your content. That's cool. And then where does the video, once you've put in your, your HapYak interactions and links, where does that video live? Does it live on HapYak? Yeah, great question. So the video lives where it's always lived. Um, so in your case, in YouTube. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of our customers have their video hosted on Brightcove or Kaltura or Wistia, for mm -hmm. example, um, either for themselves or for their clients. And the great news there is it's non-disruptive to your workflow. Um, you would just grab the URL for the Wistia video or the Brightcove video mm -hmm. um, and create a project using that Wistia URL. Um, the good news there, I think long term, if you switch providers from YouTube to Vimeo or something like that, um, you all you have to do is update this field right here and your interactive video is going to remain. All that great work you did to make it interactive, it just switches the video source um, mm -hmm. to something else where you indicate that right here. Uh, cool. This is amazing. Really cool stuff and it does change the way people think or should change the way people think about the video experience and thinking more about the end user and not so much about, you know, or did they get to the end of the video. Um, yeah. Another quick question here. Um, uh, Munib's asking if you can uh, show the analytics or show an example sure. of how that works. Yeah, I'd be happy to do so. Um, I'm also going to put my contact info up here um, while we're switching back and forth. In case anyone has questions after the webinar, again, please feel free to get in touch with me either on LinkedIn, Twitter, or via email. Um, but let's take a look at the analytics here. Um, I'm going to switch over to a different set of videos. Uh, this should be good. I'm going to view reports. Um, and why don't we take a look at two parts of these analytics that are most relevant to marketing and sales. Mm -hmm. I always like to sort my analytics by 30 days no matter what system I'm using because you start to see really interesting periodicity um, mm. or patterns you know, in how people are actually viewing your videos. I actually am wondering why these patterns are emerging. I'll have to <laughs> take a look at that after the webinar. Um, but the first two things I'd recommend getting started with are chapters and links. Um, so if I click on links and then I click on a specific um, project, hopefully this has multiple links in it. Uh, nope, that doesn't. Maybe let's try this one right here. This one doesn't have it, but let's try chapters because that'll definitely have a good example. Mm -hmm. um, in this case, I'm clicking on one of my specific videos, and what I see here is I added five chapters, but look at this. One of the chapters has been clicked on 24 times, Wow! and the bottom three have only been clicked on three, three, and two times. And this one's in the middle of the video. Mm. This is, in this case, incredible intelligence on what my learners are interested in because I'm training with this video. But if this is a lead prospecting or a content marketing video um, where you're demonstrating your product and you see, wow, what is this? More than half, almost 60% of your viewers are clicking on this chapter right here. You're going to want to do a breakout video on that topic mm -hmm. um, and you're wanna, going to want to get the specific people who actually clicked on that chapter. Um, so you can touch base with them and say, hey, I see you're interested in XYZ. Um, let's talk some more about it. Um, links is the same way. In this case, there's only one link in this video, but you often see the cream rise to the top in terms of the three or four different pages that you'd go to. Remember, Party Homes is actually, I think, six different calls to action at the end six different uh, home sites where you can do it, um, where you could click through to, they actually um, take a look at that very closely to see which properties people are most interested in. Um, finally, with the analytics, you get down to kind of user level analytics. I'll show you Gradebook as an example. Um, what you see is every individual user, and this is anonymized data for the um, demo here, but you see every individual, um, what project they were on, what they clicked on, what their answer was, and when they took the quiz, which is great. Again, lead intelligence, lead intelligence and sales intelligence. You can even see how well they're doing. Um, so this is kind of about lead, uh, what's it called? Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Mm -hmm. um, you know, the value of a lead, how well they right. understand your product. Um, so it, again, with 
Papiac Analytics or really any interactive video analytics, the take home is start segmenting your data down by the annotation type and try to understand which sections of the video people are interested in at a group level and at an individual level. Mm. Um, and that's how you're going to get some incredible, valuable lead and sales intelligence through, through video. That's very cool. Um, and I also appreciate that there's so much content here and that you know we're not trying to sell anything and we're saying run out and buy this or that, but I do have some questions about Hapyak. Uh, Stan wants to know on the free test version, how long do the interactive parts stay active if you don't purchase a plan? But I also believe you do have a, a free plan, correct? Yeah, sure. Um, again, I'll just go over this briefly because um, since it's, it was asked, I'm happy to uh, cover how to get started if you are interested in getting started. Mm -hmm. um, go to our homepage, and then on the top right, you'll see the plan section. Um, and there is a free plan that has access to all features, all reports, um, and you get to create up to five interactive videos. Um, we also offer support via email you know, to anyone getting started. We love to help anyone get started to advise them on best practices just like we're doing in this webinar. Um, but signing up takes literally one minute and then once you do that you'll have access to this tool um, to start creating your interactive videos. These remain live forever. This is a free forever plan. Um, so if you only have five videos, uh, I recommend just do it. <laughs> There's going to be no problem there. And then as you can see, the pricing is very favorable going up. Um, you'll see you know, the value start to accrue much quicker than the cost of interactive video will. Mm -hmm. That's true with Happy Acker. That's true with really any other um, tool you're using. I think the other part of that equation is the, the time it takes to make these interactive videos is not that much. So you're not doing a big ask, you know, for the other mm -hmm. folks in the organization to really dedicate to doing it. It's a what you see, what you get interface. It's easy to understand. So both the monetary price and the time value of people's times to create it is pretty easy. Um, does that answer the question there on pricing, or did I miss something? No, I believe so. I think it's great that you know you can get started for free. I did my video with chapter markers when I had that 20-minute video. I was like, how am I going to guide people through this and kind of make the experience better for them so that they don't have to just guess where things are. So it's yep. just enormously valuable, and I think it really um, it's a very customer-centric, customer-friendly thing because you're basically giving them control of what they want to see and how they want to see it. Yeah. Yeah, I hope so. Hopefully it is. Um, other questions that I can answer? I actually can run over here, so I'm happy okay. to stay on the line and answer as many questions as there are. Sure. Peter wants to know, will the clicks on the chapters tell who wanted the information? Uh, so uh, I guess can you say that to, one more time? Going back to analytics. Will the clicks on the chapters tell who wanted the info? So I, be, I guess what he's saying is that pe when somebody clicks on a chapter, you're going to know who the person is that says they're interested in that particular chapter. Yeah, you sure can. So um, this is a, a little bit advanced. I can sort of cover it in brief here. Um, again, Hapyak is web software. So we take a very agnostic approach to who these people are and how you pass in lead information. So if you use a system like HubSpot, Marketo, um, Salesforce or something like that, you might have logged in users. Mm -hmm. And what you do is no matter where the Happy Act video is, um, you're going to append a parameter that says, and I believe this is the right jargon, um, but please email me and I'll make sure. It is. You say happy act user ID, oops, happy act user ID equals such and such. So it might equal mm -hmm. an email address or it might equal a parameter that you're passing in for that external system. If you do that, everything that viewer do does is going to be tracked. So if I did mm -hmm. this and I watch this page, everything I do is going to be tracked as ccpeer at happyact.com. You can even test that here um, on the landing page. Again, you test your video by clicking landing page and then click here, test personalization. You can do it live. So I'll say um, email address is whatever. Um, hit submit. And now as I watch the video and click on all the chapters, mm -hmm. um, 
it's going to show you a view down here of all the parameters that we track wow. um, as you're doing it. So <laughs> it's getting, it might feel like um, uh, information overload, but it's very important to know that every one of you on the webinar probably has different things that you're interested in. You might want to know which chapters people actually click on, or you might want to know answers to quiz questions and um, sort of other click-through information. So all that information is available directly here to see. It's available here when you click on View Reports, um, and it's available for you and your developers. Where was the uh, API page? By going to happyact.com slash docs. I'll, in fact, paste this into the chat here mm -hmm. um, so you guys have access that, to that live. And I'll paste in this plans page as well. Um, and yeah. while I'm at it, why don't I paste in my email address? Um, I hope that answers the question. Yeah, that's fantastic. Uh, so you know, absolutely nothing to lose by going and checking it out and trying it, especially since you can do a few videos for nada. So this is great. I've got a lot of great comments here, a lot of thank yous, uh, good questions. Uh, so yeah, this has been tremendously helpful. Thanks so much. Yeah, it's and it's, it's really my it's my pleasure. I. Um, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to happy act this video. I'm going to make it interactive. I'll put you know, uh, chapters on it, links, all that good stuff, and then we can share it with the mailing list afterwards. So if folks want a refresher when they go back, if they want some on-demand training on interactive video, it'll be there for them. And please do share this um, with other folks if you think they'd be interested in. Share it online. We really encourage you to tweet out this webinar because um, we're here to help. Uh, we really want to help people get started with interactive video in any way um, that they can. Yeah, this is fantastic. And again, if you want to stay ahead of the curve and really uh, you know, serve your viewers best, uh, check this stuff out. And we'll, uh, like Cass says, we'll, we'll turn this into a Happy Act interactive demo. So there will be a replay, a, I guess an enhanced replay, we could call it. So that's fantastic. Thank you. Anything else to add before we wrap up? Uh, on my side, no. I, I really do appreciate the time that everyone spent here. I know how much time an hour is, but I really hope it was valuable. Please do get in touch with me at any time. If it's a question having to do with Happy Act, interactive video in general, um, or anything else, uh, I'm happy to. I love talking to people, so please do. My email address is csapir at happyact.com. There it is again. You can contact me on Twitter or via LinkedIn. Um, and thank you again. I really enjoyed the webinar, and thanks, Lou, for setting it up. I thought it was great. Thank you. My pleasure, and thanks, everybody, for being here and for, for all the great comments. Uh, watch for the enhanced replay, and we will catch up with you guys soon. Thanks so much. Bye for now. Bye-bye.